A pluribusunum. 56 acts from the states, the territories, and federal district of the United States have given it all for greatness. Only 10 have made it to the final. Some of them came in with years or even decades of experience with record labels and arena audiences. Some have traveled great lengths to be seen. Some even made it big as part of something bigger and are looking to strike out on their own. Others came seemingly out of nowhere. They practiced singing and composing from their home and only recently got noticed by the internet or by the producers of the show. No matter where they came from, this may be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to define themselves from the rest. E pluribus unum. At the end of the night, there can be only one. Hello, this is J.E. Realize, and that was a little overdramatic, wasn't it? This is part two of a two-part episode regarding episode eight of the American Song Contest. I already went through some stuff like who qualified to be here, some viewing figures and that sort of stuff. Plus, this episode is going to be released earlier than usual because otherwise, if I had released it at the same time, 12 p.m. Pacific Daylight, then none of you would watch it because the Eurovision Song Contest would have started semi-final one at the exact same time. So instead, it's going to be released at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Don't know what that means? Use the time converter. And also, I recorded this part before the show so I can get some biases out of the way. With that being said, let's advance the clock a few hours and see where we are at after the final. Well, that was something. I think I'm going to begin at the beginning. A very good place to start. I know I botched that. We start with Kelly Clarkson and Snoop Dogg doing performances, you know, just to illustrate who they are and all that sort of stuff, you know. I mean, it does give a little bit of a finalist energy. Also, we did have a parade, though it wasn't a flag ceremony because no one brought in flags. And there was one missing, which I'll get into when we go further down the list. Also, we have an ASC trophy. Oh, did I say ASC trophy? I meant ESC trophy! Except it was tinged yellow. My god, this is a parade of disasters. But I guess let's move on to the performances. I won't talk at length about the performances unless I have to. You know the deal. Connecticut, for instance, they basically changed nothing. North Dakota, they added a bit of flavor to the graphics and also gave her a suit more representative of her indigenous culture. Texas was interesting. Like, they swapped out his white outfit, the one I said was like a shonen antagonist, and yet somehow became more antagonistic because instead of going for the Lukahani he went last time, he got a battle vest. Like, he looked like he was ready to swat someone. This guy just keeps getting antagonistic, though you wouldn't tell it from Reddit. He's actually a pretty nice guy. Alabama didn't change much. They changed the costumes, they added in some fog for ambiance, and they brought back the kiss. And then we got Kentucky. They didn't really change much except for like giving him a more uh, pastor or televangelist suit, like a mix between the two. But they still kept the Christian cross icon that they did in the semifinal, which wouldn't fly in Eurovision. Like, they would approach Jordan Smith and say, you gotta cut that out. We get you're a man of faith, but Eurovision is meant to be agnostic. Hey, it's America, am I right? Next we get Washington, and this is where things get interesting. He couldn't attend. But he gave us the performance based off of rehearsals. And it was more moody, except less of a speakeasy movie and more of a subtle vibrancy. They added in a little more color from the background lighting. But the reason he wasn't there is, well, you can kind of imply that it's an emotional time for him and his mother. Alan Stone? I give you nothing but my respect, and I hope you find 
what you're looking for, whether it be solace or comfort or whatever. You deserve it. Next, we get the de facto California candidate since California was actually eliminated. Fun fact, Kelly didn't really tease Snoop for Texas being in the final, but California not being in the final. That's weird. But hey, Tanel's in the final, so I guess a win for American Samoa is a win for California. That's called appropriation. But the performance added a bit more, well, Polynesia. They added fire dancers. And while open fire isn't rare in Eurovision, it's still cool. Then we got Oklahoma, and she sports the red theme, loved the outfit, and I think they managed to strike a balance with the background vocals. Like, the first one, she was accused of lip-syncing. I didn't really have much of a problem with it, but I can see where it comes from. The second one, her voice sounded a lot more reserved. I was kind of unsettled by this. But in the final, I think they figured it out. They have the backing vocals when she sings the chorus, just kind of uh, lifting it up like in a background, like a supporting role. I wouldn't say that's bad. Also, instead of doing the whole jump backwards at the end, she just kind of hangs there and then trust falls, you know, trust exercise. It's still pretty cool. In fact, I think it's even more cool. It's like an allure. I have got to get a girlfriend. Ninth up is Tennessee. And I got to say this. I think this is the most polished country song of the entire contest. And no, Michigan doesn't count the same way that Old Town Road doesn't count. It's a solid package, and I can see why people wouldn't like it, because it's kind of... Um, safe, but it's professional, and not really that generic. It's more of a Grammy bait rather than just straight up generic country music. And I see why that would turn some people off, but I liked it. What I didn't like was Colorado, and they basically did the same thing they did in the first two shows they performed, except he brought his wife into the setup. I mean, it kinda makes sense. That was the whole climax of the song. Oh, we meet eyes, we must come together at this big, exciting moment. And it's cool for them to utilize the green room again, but still, it's kinda gimmicky. I mean, not bad, but I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that. There are a few other things that they changed in the show, like whenever the songs aren't being performed, like at the beginning and end of the commercial break, they would play songs that were already eliminated in the contest. And they also brought Cruz Rock back as a DJ. That is cool. That is awesome. Mad respect for the continuity. Also in the postcards, they had the finalists do interviews with Kelly or Snoop. And I like those interviews. It's pretty neat. Not sure if I would classify that as worthy of being the format for the final postcard, but at least they're not rehashing the postcards. Eurovision is rehashing their postcards for semi-finalists when they go to the final. They didn't always do that. And then I'm gonna get into the part where NBC and ASC and everyone involved starts to piss me off. And I am not apologetic about this. This is getting on my nerves. First off, I'm watching from Pacific Time. The show is three hours delayed and only lasts two hours. It's one thing to open up the polls 24 hours or more before the show to get people voting from any time zone. But there was no indication that this show, if you're watching live from Pacific Time, is not going to count your vote. And it's not like the NBC can't do this because they have this disclaimer put at the beginning of every ASC show in the Pacific Time region recorded from an earlier broadcast. If they had put Voting window is closed at the bottom of the screen before the show started. It would have not misled people. But that is not the only mistake they did. 
if it was just a slip up, I would get it. But then they go as far as to, instead of counting the votes from the jury per state, they counted the votes from the jury per region. I am not opposed to that idea. The caveat is, I would still require the juries of each state to have their own set of votes. But remember, in NBC's full wisdom, they only had one juror per state! Guess what that leads to? Corruption! So, what happens next? They decide, oh, we're just getting that group, the juries, by region, five to six states per region, and have it all as one set of points. Again, this wouldn't be the end of the world had you at least put a multiplier on that. They decided to go for a 1486 split of combined votes, overwhelmingly favoring the televote. As a Eurovision fan, this pisses me off. I have always sworn by the 50-50 system, and then Sweden decides to be all smart and do this to me. And again, it isn't like this is a deal breaker. I mean, no, this is a deal breaker. But everything that has led up to this decision have been shoddy. The one juror per state or territory, that's bad. And not advertising their show so that more voters can come in to dilute established fan bases? I'm gonna get into that. That's strike two. Grouping the jury vote into regions and having each region, 10, have each one set of jury votes compared to the states and district and territories, which each have their own set of votes, 56, outweigh the jury vote, strike Three, all you would need to do to make this pass is make each region weighted so it would be a fair 50-50 system based on how many states and territories each region has. They couldn't even do that. And to those of you correcting me, saying, oh, the public voting system is better anyway. We should just switch to 100% voting. You're not listening, are you? I brought up the fan bases. There are less stringent controls also keeping people from outside the United States for voting in the American Song Contest. All you need is a VPN and an email address. I can't even vote in Eurovision through the Eurovision app even with a VPN, and that was in 2018! But getting back to the argument that people want 100% televote anyway? No, you don't! Public tastes do not always age well. I appreciate the juries, and a good jury, not a one-person jury for each state, but a more balanced jury, like what we have in Eurovision. Five jurors per country. When you have a jury like that, they tend to vote for more polished and more professional presentations. Yeah, they're not always gonna vote for Camp or Kitsch. They're more concerned about whether the song works on its own merit. And sometimes if the background compliments it, the televote votes on a whim. How well do you think Nettis Toy aged in 2022 compared to, say, Eleni Ferreira's Fuego? How well do you think Ellen Nikki's Running Scared aged compared to really anyone else? And I know that's a lot of shots to be fired, but when you look back at American Song Contest in 10 years or 20 years, you're going to wonder why this clown got second place just by being carried by the public. I'm holding this upside down. 
You get how ticked off I am. The one thing they did right, and they had to do this right because otherwise they would look like idiots, is they decided not to reveal the jury ranking during the show until after all the public votes have been counted. But that was out of necessity. And it's not like I want to be harsh on this show. But I cannot avoid the flaws. They are really tainting my mind with this incompetency. So Washington wins the jury. But the jury is so underpowered that it doesn't make a damn difference. And now it just occurred to me, I think I know why they did this. Is to have a virtual house and virtual senate in American Song Contest. The senate has 100 seats. The house has over 430. I think their idea is, let's try making a house and senate sort of leveling. But that is not Eurovision. This is just befuddling. And I would forgive it if any of the other pieces of the puzzle aligned. But this cannot stand. When I saw Colorado in 10th place, and he suddenly received over 500 points, I was livid. Not because much of the fan base, but because the televote had that much more power over the juries to just scrub everything out. Before we got into the final, I thought of three different people. One of them would be the one I think is probably going to win, and that would be Jordan Smith. He got even support from the jury and the televote, so I guess that would work out. The second person on my list was the one I think should win, based off of song merit and... Uh, what would be most receptive to a radio audience. And that would be Tyler Braden from Tennessee. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me about this, but the common listener on the radio is not going to care. They're not going to know where Tyler Braden is from. They're just going to find him as a pretty decent country song compared to, say, Colorado, which they're going to find a little disappointing, or Alexa, which is going to be niche. And then the third choice is the one that I wanted to win out of the remaining finalists. And that's Texas. I'm not going to apologize. I love that guy's performance. I love that guy's energy. And I don't know what it is about the antagonistic entry, but that's what made me vote hard for it. So I'm not going to comment much on the results of American Song Contest. I think they're a joke. I went with my advice, weighted the regions based on the number of states, territories, and districts they have, and came up with an approximate alternate list. As you can see, Oklahoma still would have kept first place. So I'm not entirely livid. At the very least, first place remained first place. But the injustices across the board, they got corrected here. I think this is a more rational, reasonable list, but also shows a flaw of American Song Contest. How easy it is to get points. Look at this. Look at this. The lowest score with the adjusted lists is 488. And even without the adjustment, Tyler Brayton still got a lot of points. So I would be ticked off at the fans or the production team or anything. But I asked for this. I reaped what I sowed. I watched through the entire show, and I got my sixth place award winner as the winner of American Song Contest. No, seriously, I thought, okay, K-pop is a bit of a niche, but it sure has an audience. So I was thinking it was going to be sixth place, like a lot of these fan favorites, but somehow... <laughs> I look stupid. I guess there really is just one last thing to say about this whole thing. NBC, just drop the program. I don't want it anymore. You clearly don't know how to do this. No one on this team had any sense to make this contest what it could have been. A well-produced, well-managed, well-advertised, and well-counted 
contest. And everything about this, besides the songs themselves, regardless of their placing, was an abject failure. And I don't want Alexa to show up at Eurovision because that is how disappointed I am in the production. ASC couldn't advertise themselves on their own merit or even with NBC's advertising budget. They don't deserve the grand final stage of Eurovision. And that leaves one last thing. Eurovision 2022. I'm not as much in the mood to watch it as I was. And I avoided the contest, but still some snippets came in. And I thought 2022 was going to be rock heavy, and I was kind of looking forward to that. But from what I heard, it's just going to be really camp. Norway sending in a camp entry. I think Latvia was it that was sending in that salad song. And um, it sounds like the United Kingdom and Spain are going for broke again. There might be some diamonds in the rough, but at this point, I am so disappointed by the concept of a media industry that I don't want to watch the show anymore. Every show that I have watched in the past decade or two leading up to this point has disappointed me so much that I don't want to consume media anymore. That sounds stupid. But the only thing I would want to consume at this point is the radio playing in the background while I write up my own fiction. And that's why I kind of want to go in this new direction for J.E. Realize. Because, guess what? Weekly video postings are working. I've gotten videos with an average of 20 or more views since I started this format. And that's more than I can ask for. So my new direction is to just keep doing more of it. Keep producing stuff that I'll come back and watch later whenever I'm bored or frustrated or just listen to. I don't really even care about watching stuff. It's a bit too much strain on my eyes when I could be focusing my eyes on other stuff like writing. Just have more of these 10 lists that I normally have and these discussions and, you know, work for me. I don't need to watch basically any of these other YouTube videos. I'll only watch them if I'm really that bored that I can't satiate myself. And in that case, I'll go back to the drawing board and make some more scripts. I have a lot of scripts I want to get through. And I really want to pump out this Tuesday at noon format more. So I guess that's the format going forward, provided that I'm not tired. Do the feedback thing. Dislike if you really have to. And honestly, I don't blame you. And I'm trying to accept that I'm just not going to be liked by anyone. Just dislike this video. Just dislike it hard. Or you can like or comment or subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at J.E. Realize. This has been J.E. Realize. I'll see you next time. And NBC, suck it.